As much as we all love, love, love Radio DJ, I mean, there's no denying it has helped us unlock our passion for broadcasting at an incredibly attractive price point. Free! However, there is one area that could use a little improvement. Come on, say it with me. Voice tracking. I, come on, you felt the pain. I know it. I'm Jeff, the Radio DJ Dude, and I think I have found a way, at least to solve my problem. Maybe my solution will help you. I found a way, a workaround, to make voice tracking work. And that is with the creative use of sweepers. <laughs> oh, you intrigued? Well, let's dive in and check it out. We are on the air. Yeah. Unless you're running a 24 seven live radio station, you need some voice tracks. If you want any personality or quote unquote human interaction on your station, which is key these days. People are craving the connection. They want to hear a, a human voice, whether it's you know live or on tape. As we said, the built-in options of Radio DJ are less than robust to pull this off. Plus, I don't have a radio station that runs on playlists. It runs on a number of rotations that I've created for each hour. So my issue was, how do I infuse voice tracks into the mix? And the hack I landed on really just rocked my world. And that was to use sweepers as voice tracks. It was the perfect fit. I was able to load up this with a whole bunch of fun, you know, talk breaks. And I have enough of them to have a fresh sound for at least three days until they start repeating. To prevent any war of words, let's uh, get some semantics out of the way. Because when I was coming up on radio, a sweeper was actually a produced production element, an imaging element that had sound effects, lasers, zingers, zappers, with the station ID. To me, that's a sweeper. While you can attach a production element like that in Radio DJ and call it a sweeper, I also think the sweeper category is kind of a catch-all for anything that you want to attach and that would run it over the intro of songs. But a sweeper didn't necessarily always equal a voice track, and that was the disconnect. And I wanted to find a way to run voiceovers, voice tracks, over the intros of songs. Okay, enough disclaimer. Let's move on. Before diving in deeper, let's take one of these voice track sweepers for a test ride. Check this one out. Triple X 80s. I'm Jamma Jeff Scott. And if you could spell out Triple X 80s on your light bright and send me a picture to Jeff at XXX80s.com, I'll play your request. Woo that deal is sweeter than Mrs. Garrett in a moo moo. <laughs> Keep in mind, these voice tracks aren't specific to a playlist, like I mentioned. They really just reinforce the 80s brand, 80s references. Some of them have uh, movie drop-ins, and I have quite the cache of phoners. When I used to be on the air for real, I have like over a thousand phone calls saved to CD-ROMs that I've edited and infused into the lineup here. Here's another sample. Triple X 80s. Hey there, I am Jam and Jeff Scott. You know, we had a hard time finding your phone number. If you ever have that problem, just head into any truck stop. It's usually scratched in one of the restroom stalls. <laughs> For extreme 80s fun, call Triple X 80s. <laughs> There's four easy steps to making the voice tracking magic happen. Extreme 80s fun right here on Triple X 80s. My name is Jam and Jeff Scott. So the first easy step is to record your voice tracks in the audio recorder of your choice. I use Audacity. So after recording and editing your tracks in Audacity, before saving them, I like to add a touch of compression and limiting to each one to really give it a nice full sound when it hits the air. Easy step number two, import your voice tracks and make sure to program them properly. Usually, in a session, I'll record 10 or 15 and just directly import them as a, uh, a folder. And here's where I'd uh, program them to the sweeper category, track type is sweeper, that's really important, and then I import the directory. Some of you might be saying, well, since there's already a voice tracks category, can't you just use that to make this work? Because you could set it, a category, the track type, you tell Radio DJ it's a voiceover, so that should work, right? Well, yeah, if you want to attach a voice track to a song manually, sure, it totally works. And you can still tell it to, you know, play at the beginning of the song or the end of the song. Yeah, that's doable. But I needed to come up with an automated solution because, once again, my station runs on rotations. 
And sweepers are the best way to automate your voice tracks over your music during your rotations because they already have an opportunity to add them. Also in the event scheduler, there's actually a function to set sweeper category to correspond to a certain day part or specialty show. You can't do that with a plain voice track category. But I know what some of you might be saying, and if you're not asking this question, it is really key. How do you make sure your voice tracks don't walk all over your song's vocals? Well, this is my solution. Every voice track I record doesn't exceed 15 seconds, as you can see here. 15, 14. So how do you tell Radio DJ to only play voice tracks, a.k.a. sweepers, over songs that have intros of at least 15 seconds or more? This is where it gets a little tricky, but not too much, because me being a coding dummy, I was even able to <laughs> implement this hack. But first, uh, I'll, I'll walk you through what it looks like on the radio DJ side. So here's AHA Take On Me. And if we go to the Others category, I'm using some of these other uh, features in a different way. Like for gender, I don't use male, female, mixed when I program my music. But what I do, and what I kind of settled on early on, was assigning every song that had an intro of 15 seconds or longer to the mixed gender. I mean, I could have used start type. I use start type for other programming reasons. And I'm going to talk about that in a future video. But you could use start type and say anything with a hard, that would signify songs with intros of 15 seconds or more. But anyway, you can choose any of these. And uh, where it matters is in the database. And that's where a little code copying pasting comes in. And we'll get to that in one second, but let's wrap this up and I'll show you what this looks like in a rotation. So here's an 80s song with a sweeper attached, which is a voice track. This is where the magic happens. So it knows to pull an 80s song from my top 40 genre, least recently played, attach a sweeper to the start of the song, but, 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 avoid a train wreck, avoid a colossal F up, and only pick a song from the mixed gender category, which we've already told the database. These are songs with intros of more than 15 seconds. So they'll fit every voice track that we've recorded. So now we've set ourselves up for on-air success. Somewhat easy step number three requires you to jump into your database. Jumping over to Heidi SQL for some database coding excitement. Okay, <laughs> don't freak out for all you coding dorks like me. I did reach out to a couple people in the radio DJ community. I actually hired a coder off Fiverr to help me craft this clunky piece of code you're about to see. Yes, I know there's definitely a more elegant way to do this, but this is what I had at my disposal. This is what worked for me and it got the job done. So let's uh, first uh, take this step-by-step -step before we jump into the code. Here's my songs database and I filtered it by genre of 143, which is top 40 songs. And if you look way down over here, under the gender category, which that's something we looked at in the back end, and you see I'm using mixed for every song that has an intro that's at least 15 seconds or more. You got that? Well, obviously it didn't happen magically, this is the code I use, which I will drop in the description section because this would absolutely suck to have to try to write this down by hand. So we're basically updating the songs in this database. We're setting the gender to mixed when these parameters are met. The song type is zero and enabled. And the ID genre, which will be different for you, 143, like I said, 143 is top 40. Your genre can be found by, wow, looking in the genre tab of your database. And popping back over to the query. This is uh, the integral part of this string of gobbledygook. And cue times, not like intro 15, not like 14, not like 13, all the way down to not like zero and a negative. And that's your big messy string. And the query you run, and you click that little execute query button, and psh, 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 all the data is updated in your database.
And now you're on your way to running voice tracks over songs with the appropriate intro length. Got it? Good. But, oh, but, 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 make sure you back up your database before you attempt any additions and editing and query running. And if you want to see if this wacky experiment work, just do this. Type in gender mixed. Apply the filter. See what songs have been affected. But I think this shows it's been an absolute SQ. Well, success. There's all these songs that are now in the mix category. And if we drill down into the Q times portion of the database, you'll see intro time 17, 24, 16, 18, 20. And we jump back to Radio DJ for easy step number four. That is telling Radio DJ when to play your sweepers. If you run your station using rotations, well, it's simple. Whenever you load your rotation, whether it's hourly, whether it's daily, you bake that into your event action. Since I run a new rotation every hour, this is what my event action looks like. Every hour at 58 minutes past, it will disable auto DJ. It'll wait two seconds. It'll clear the playlist sets my sweeper category. This is VTS, which is my daily category. Then it loads the rotation and I have it pulling a top of the hour ID into the queue after that. It waits a second and it plugs back in the auto DJ and it waits for the magic to begin all over again every hour at the top of the hour. You save that event and then you're off and running. And that's the cool thing. You want to create voice tracks for different day parts, different shows, different features. It's as simple as adding more subcategories to the sweeper category and then programming those voice tracks to the right subcategory when you import them. One other note, in order to pull this off, it all comes down to the mix. Your voice tracks, your sweepers are heard over the song intros, so make sure to double check your mix settings and adjust them accordingly. This is something you have to play around with. It's very subjective how loud the music should be under your voice track is personal. So you figure out what number works for you. I'm using six, set vo song volume to six, because I don't want it totally to dip down where you can barely hear it because that doesn't sound very good. So you just don't want your voice track to be buried in the music either. Test a couple of these settings. I think between, you know, four to six typically will work for most people. There we go. We've achieved the seemingly impossible, making voice tracking somewhat accessible and usable on Radio DJ. Who knew? Far from a knock on Radio DJ, this video really proves its absolute flexibility. While the built-in voice tracking feature isn't quite where we all want it to be, there are so many other features within Radio DJ that allow us to accomplish our on-air goals. So give it a try and give it a click. Please hit subscribe and the next time I, Jeff, the radio DJ dude, drops a video, I'd love for you to see it and hopefully make your broadcasting life a little easier. Thanks again for watching and most important, keep rocking those mics all over the world.